Hello everyone and welcome to another installment of our video blog. I'm just returning from a pretty amazing set of meetings that took me to Idaho and from Idaho to Australia and from Australia to New Zealand, 21 days. And uh, I've got to admit, uh, the meetings were very uh, fruitful, very positive, saw some amazing things taking place, and so I want to report that some. And uh, I'll start with Idaho. You know, we had uh, this conference with Kerry Browning in Idaho, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Uh, we've done a series of meetings there over the years, and this one seemed to be a culmination of much of what we've been prophesying uh, that would take place in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, sure enough, as had been prophesied, uh, healings took place. Uh, uh, James Maloney was one of the ministers that we met. We've heard about James for a number of years, and we were just uh, really encouraged by what we saw and felt like we connected with James. And, and in fact, James is going to be with us in uh, Tucson, Arizona, uh, April 12th through 14th in our conference. And I'm encouraged about that because we've been contending for the healing anointing there in Tucson as well as in Shreveport, Louisiana. And frankly, uh, James is moving in a pretty powerful uh, anointing for healing and deliverance. And so I'm encouraged about that, about what we're going to see for 2012. And uh, the reports that we got uh, from the people that we knew that were in Coeur d'Alene was amazing. And so uh, I believe this is the year. 2012 is the year for a breakthrough and uh, for something to be established, I believe. And uh, these apostolic hubs are going to be set up. <clears throat> Leaders are going to emerge uh, in this season that uh, have, have a heart for the kingdom. And uh, they've been sifted and, and uh, they've been purged and purified so that they have no agendas of their own. Uh, only the kingdom agenda. Uh, and they're not going to take credit for what God's going to do. He's going to get all the glory. That's what's been taking place over the last several years. And uh, frankly, I saw a scripture yesterday that kind of relates to where we are right now, I believe. I was in prayer. And, uh, and while I was in prayer, I looked and on the wall, right on the wall in front of me was a scripture written. And it was Isaiah chapter 54. And, and, and I want to read part of that to you. And, and then I'll give you some of my perspective of what I think this is talking about. But uh, beginning with verse 6, it says, For the Lord has called you. Say, so praise the Lord. The Lord has called us. We've got a calling on our life. We have a purpose. We have a mandate. Uh, 2 Timothy 1.9 says, God has saved you and called you with a holy calling. The word holy calling could have been translated divine destiny. And it goes on to say that the same grace that purchased your salvation purchased your destiny. And we wouldn't think about being flippant about our salvation, the blood, the purchase of our, of our salvation, the, 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 the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. We would not... Think about minimizing the importance of that. The Lord told me, why then are we so flippant about our destiny? Because the same blood that bought our salvation, bought our destiny, our function, our purpose, our mandate in this earth in order to manifest the kingdom of God. And it says, the grace that was set apart for us in 2 Timothy 1, 9, before, the, before uh, time began. That means before the foundation of the world, the Lord saw you. And He put something in you, a destiny and a purpose and he set apart a, a measure of grace just for you to accomplish your destiny. And 2012 is a year to begin to empty that account, to begin to pull and make withdrawals on our grace account and begin to do something fruitful uh, for the kingdom. So I, I'm encouraged about that, and I want to encourage you with that. But it says, For the Lord has called you like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, even like a wife of one's youth when she is rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion I will gather you. You know, the Bible says, I will never, never leave you nor forsake you. So the Lord has never forsaken us. But what, he, what we've been through is a season of time where the people that have been contending for the kingdom, people that have been wanting to live in a, a level of intimacy and relationship beyond what we have seen in our generation so far, seemingly have gone through a season of severe testing. And it feels like we've been forsaken, but we haven't. Uh, the very fact that we've been through a season of, of, of grooming and testing is proof positive that we're not disqualified but are being qualified to carry something significant in our generation. And it goes on to say in, in, in Isaiah 54, This is like the days of Noah to me when I swore that the waters of Noah would no longer flood the earth, so I have sworn that I will no longer be angry with you, uh, for the mountains may be removed and the hills may shake, but my loving kindness will not be removed from you, and my covenant of peace will not be shaken, says the Lord who has compassion. So I'm looking for a number of people in this season to enter into covenant with the Lord, a covenant that will not be broken, a covenant that will not be shaken, intimacy and relationship that will not uh, be broken uh, by, by any external means that the enemy has to, to release against us. Uh, I believe that it says, goes on to say that our sons will be taught of the Lord and the well-being of our sons will be great. I, I feel like that's talking about the hubs, uh, the apostolic hubs that we're going to be setting up in this season of time when we're going to gather in 
champions, gather and guard is what it says in uh, Genesis 41-35. Gather these champions and guard them. Give them a place of safety. Give them a place to, to be equipped and to be delivered and be, to be set free and to be healed and to be empowered. And then at the appropriate time, we're going to open the doors and release those champions on this generation and we're going to see the greatest harvest of souls the world has ever seen. It will happen. And so right now, I'm looking for sons to come into these hubs. I'm looking for, for people that, that have such a heart for the kingdom that they're wanting to come into a place that is a community, uh, a family environment. Uh, what we're seeing now is not going to be servant and master. It's going to be fathers and sons. That's the real apostolic anointing that's coming in, in this generation. And, and the fathers that are being raised up will have the power of blessing. When Isaac blessed his son Jacob, it was a pretty significant blessing. It took. It was a major deal because the very day Jacob received a blessing from his father, the El Shaddai blessing, he traveled one day's journey, laid his head upon a rock. The Bible says the heavens opened. And angels were ascending and descending. He said, this is none other than the house of God, the very gate of heaven. And I believe that we're going to have an ability in this season to bless our sons. And they're going to have an experience. They're going to, it'll be something tangible. It'll be something fruitful that'll take shape. You know, even as I am talking to you about this, I, I had a man that was like a spiritual father to me. Uh, his name was Wade Taylor. Uh, he went home to be with the Lord. You know, last month I talked to you about um, R.W. Shambach, this great man of God that we also knew. And he went home to be with the Lord, and now Wade Taylor uh, has gone. And, and he was a great man. He, he, uh, he came to me, actually, several years ago, back in the 90s, and he, he made an incredibly encouraging statement to me. He said, you know, your message that you're bringing is the most uh, similar. It resonates the most in me of any person that, that he was ministering with at that time. And I'm not meaning to say that uh, about my own ministry, except to say that he was a man that contended for the kingdom. He had an incredible revelation of the kingdom. And, uh, you know, it... Uh, his, his books were, were so rich and filled with uh, incredible insights about what this generation is going to look like and what the kingdom message is going to look like. And I, it's a great loss again. But I know that every time one of these fathers goes home, sons are about to raise up into their place of responsibility, into their place of duty, into their anointing. And so I, I just want to prophesy that. Those of you that loved Wade and knew his ministry, just ask the Lord to release you into the purpose that he prophesied about that there will be champions that are overcomers, uh, those that will be lifted above this earthly realm into the realm of the Spirit. And they're going to see something, and they're going to be empowered uh, with an overcomer's anointing, and they're going to begin to manifest the revelation of Jesus Christ in this hour. I believe the plumb line message and the plumb line ministry is on the horizon. I believe it's at the door. Any day now, something's going to break, and we're going to see a new dimension of God's heart released into our generation. I believe it. I'm prophesying that. Even when I was in Australia, we met... Uh, uh, people that I know that we will have lifelong relationships with, and in, in New Zealand as well, Tim Stevenson and those guys. An amazing company of people down there that are contending for exactly the same things we are. So I know this is a message that is not um, just relegated to the United States or, or to the United Kingdom, but all over the world there are people poised, uh, a remnant company of people poised to be released into something in our generation that the Bible describes. I'll tell you one more thing that's going to happen. Um, we're going to see that when these hubs are established, we're going to begin to give New Testament relevance to L Old Testament prophecies. That's one of the things the Lord spoke to me. If you remember, in the early church, they were having unprecedented events happening. The Gentiles were getting the Holy Spirit. They had not foreseen that. And so they had a council meeting in Acts 15, and, and they're thinking, what are we going to do with these Gentiles, getting the Holy Spirit like we were? We, we were not anticipating that. This is unprecedented. And James, anointed by the Holy Spirit, said, wait a minute now. One of the prophets had something to say about this. Amos prophesied that the Lord would take a people for his own namesake from among the Gentiles. So there they suddenly gave, uh, you know, first century relevance to an Old Testament prophecy. The same paradigm will exist today. We're about to have unprecedented happening, things that will begin to fulfill Old Testament prophecy. And as this happens, I believe we're going to see a shift and a change in the entire government of God in the earth. So let me just pray for you. I hope many of you can come to our conference in Tucson, Arizona. We now have James Maloney, Chuck Pierce, uh, Stephen Shelley, and myself. We have Joanne McFadder leading worship with Stephen uh, Swanson and Josh Lindsay. It's going to be an amazing time, an amazing time. And I really hope many of you can be there. I think being there is going to be something. I believe it's going to be a commissioning uh, experience for many. So uh, be there if you can. If not, web stream it and, get, and glean what you can from this season. So Lord, bless every person here. Bless everyone watching this blog. No matter what country they're in, 
No matter what part of the world they're in, may they be blessed and activated for this, this fresh dimension of your heart that is going to be released. Lord, gather us now as you promised. Gather us with great compassion and with great loving kindness and let us enter into this covenant of peace. I ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen.